you go. All right. I have the propensity to speak quickly sometimes and move around, so if you give me one of these, I'll, I'll pick up the pace. I won't stand. Uh, welcome. Thanks for everyone showing up today. This is beginner Fibonacci. I tend not to think of Fibonacci as having a beginner and advanced stage. It's a pretty relatively simple concept. Um, really what we're here to do is master how to use it efficiently, right? Anyone can take a Fibonacci retracement. Anyone can take an extension. It's doing it properly that really is important. So um, it's something that's very near and dear to me. For those of you who do know me, I'm uh, with Daily FX. I specialize in short-term and near-term trading strategies. And Fibonacci is one of my major tools that I use on a daily basis across time frames. Scalping, long-term trades, monthly trades. Um, it's a tool that if you master, can really be an effective aspect of your strategy. As we mentioned before, it is not a one, it's not a strategy in and of itself. It is just a tool that you put in your box that you implement with your strategy. Um, if you have a quick question as we go through, something really quick you want to address, just raise your hand real quick. Uh, something a little bit more intense, leave it to the end. And uh, as we jump into the live charts after the presentation, uh, we'll be taking questions. We can go through at that point. So before we begin, I'm sure you guys have seen this before. Obviously, trading has a level of risk. Uh, if it's something that uh, you have just get started with, you want to make sure that you understand that it is a risky endeavor in general. Um, I'm sure you guys have all seen this already, so we'll breeze right through. So it all started way back in the day. Um, Fibonacci actually originates in Indian culture back in the 8th century. It's um, a ratio that occurs all over in nature. Okay? It's nothing that's constructed by man. It is a uh, relationship ratio that you can see across markets, nature, galaxies. Like We can go talk about Fibonacci in your body measurements. Um, it was actually devised by a guy named Leonardo Pisa later became known as Fibonacci, obviously. He wrote a book called uh, Liber Abaci back in 1202 that introduced the concept. Uh, that's really when it started to at least gather pace, but it is a very, very uh, ancient relationship that was noticed. So <clears throat> what is it? It's a very basic concept, guys. It's a sequence. It's a recurrence relation. So every number in the sequence is based on the previous one. So if you look at that first chart up there, or that first sequence, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5, and so on. And as you get deeper into the sequence, you'll notice that each number is actually 618 of the number previous to it. And the deeper you get, the closer you get to the actual 618 ratio. Another way of looking at this, if we have any teachers in the house, <laughs> this is Pascal's triangle. Very simple concept, again, basically you're taking the two numbers above and it's giving you the middle number. If you take the shallow degrees, it's the same Fibonacci sequence that you're looking at. So it's something that's very basic concept. Um, no need to actually spend too much time on this, but it's important to know just the basics of how it works. So 618, often you'll hear as the golden ratio, and indeed it is. There's a lot of different derivatives of 618. We got the 236, the 382, 786. Um, some people use 764, which is basically 382 times 2. Um, but 618 is really the one that you want to put most focus on. It's going to be the one that's going to be more telling when you're taking retracements on a pullback. It's going to be the ratio that's going to be more telling when you're taking extensions, looking to target something in projected price action. But 618 is really what you want to, uh, what you want to focus on. So before we mentioned this already, something that's prevalent in nature. You can see in branches of a tree, spirals of a shell, curves of the wave, galaxy formations, petals on a fruitlet, flowers, um, they all signify and, and represent Fibonacci re relationships within whatever it is aspect that we're talking about. So again, this can actually be a great tool to be applied to financial markets. Does anyone here use Elliott? Elliott Wave. Okay, so if you guys use Elliott, you're automatically using Fibonacci, right? Because a lot of the ratios that we see between Elliott Waves are going to be a factor of 618. A lot of times you'll see wave three will be 1618 of the initial wave one of the advance. Um, and if you're, using, if you're using Elliott and you went to uh, Jamie Setley's uh, presentation, I encourage you definitely to look more into Fibonacci as a tool to, to utilize with that strategy. So let's get into the nitty gritty. This is basics. Before you even think about a retracement or an extension or anything Fibonacci related, you have to identify the trend. 
Again, you guys already know this, but this basics, higher highs, higher lows, consider that, consider that an uptrend. Lower highs, lower lows, we consider that a downtrend. And most importantly, it's very important to understand when you're in a ranging or flat market. In these markets, that's not where you want to put an extension, right? These are the ones we're going to focus on the Fibonacci retracements, which is the first thing that we'll talk about. No questions on this, right? Pretty basic. All right. A Fibonacci retracement is simply a tool that you use when you're trying to measure what a pullback, where a pullback may find support in any direction, right? The first step is to identify a given high and a low of a move. So you're probably thinking right off the bat, well, right there is the in lies the problem, right? How do I know it's a high or low? You cannot use Fibonacci to help you with that. That's something that you guys have devised on yourself. How do we do that? Well, there could be divergence in RSI, or if you use stochastics or MACD. You want something other than price action to give you a tip that we may have put in an interim top or an interim bottom. Depending on the time frame that you're working with, this can be on a micro time frame. So if NFPs come out, markets spike up 70 pips, you can take a retracement right off that if you're someone who's much more short term. If you're someone who's a little bit more long term, you can take a yearly Fibonacci retracement of the entire advance or, or decline of a specific year. But this is a pretty good example. This was actually the Sterling Aussie. It's a daily chart. And after this type of advance, or this type of decline rather, I'm pretty comfortable that that's an interim low. It's actually pretty close to a nice pivot that we had in price action right around that, uh, what is that, 147.50. There was actually some RSI divergence there as well that gave you a little bit more conviction that this may be in your term bottom. Point is, you're never going to really know for 100% if this is a bottom or, 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 or a top, right? And trying to call bottoms and tops is probably the worst thing you can do in trading in general. Um, but you want some kind of conviction to tell you that, that that's in your term bottom. So what do we do? We've identified the trend as obviously a descending channel um, that worked out pretty well in this. Another thing, if you use Elliott, the basic 3-5, right? Five advanced, three, 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 three decline, three corrective. You identify that, all right, we've completed a five wave advance or a three wave correctional phase or we broke out of a triangle. So you have some sort of indication that we may have a near term bottom. You go ahead and apply the retracement. It's very simple. We'll look at a live chart. You just choose the tool, go from the high to the low and it's gonna give you the Fibonacci retracement levels. Now the key levels that I actually look at right off the bat are gonna be the 38.2 and the 618. Okay, the 618 obviously being your, 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 critical, your critical retracement. Um, what's important to know is a lot of people do use the 50% retracement. I don't have it on here now, I'll show you at it in a second, but the 50 is actually not a Fibonacci, which a lot of people don't take into account. It's actually just something that happens a lot in markets. You'll see any given move retrace half that move. Um, so it's good to have on there, but it is not a true Fibonacci sequence number. So what do I use it for, right? You think there's a near-term bottom in place, your, your indicators that you're using, if you're someone who uses stochastics, RSI, CCI, whatever you want, right? You have a signal right now that you're trying to take a long position. Your initial topside target is 152.70 on the 38.2 retracement. Market plays out, bam, runs, it, runs into resistance. Now at this point, if your broader bias is still bullish, you're doing nothing. You're booking profits and you're waiting on the side, waiting for a pullback to get back long, right? Well, in this, in this scenario, we actually blasted right through that 38.2 retracement and where we find resistance. Next level up, right? Now obviously this is a cherry picked example. You're not gonna always get a directional trade that stops right exactly where you want it. A lot of times you do. <laughs> if drawn properly, a lot of times you can. Um, but at this point, again, what are you doing here? You're, you're booking profits, right? You have to hit your target. I'm not going to try to press this long unless I see a breach of this. And I'm not going to try to play the downside because, again, I'm, I'm bullish. You want to always keep your trades in the direction of your broader bias. For myself, near-term traders, scalpers, we use this. We thrive on this because we'll play a rebound off that level. Specifically, the 618s are typically really nice pullbacks, right? A little bit more stringent of support. Does everyone know what I mean by support and resistance, by the way? Consensus? Okay, so resistance being your ceiling, like the top price action runs right into it. It's like hitting the ceiling, support being your, your floor that holds price action up. So on this 618, it would have been actually a nice pullback. If I were to take a short from here, guys, where's the target? 38.2, right? Lo and behold, we missed it actually by six pips, right? So a lot, of, a lot of times one of the questions I get is, Mike, how do I know when the retracement is, is stale? You know, I've been working with this retracement price action has been great, trade's been working out great, but it's starting not to respect those levels as much. 
And typically, that's when we start to switch it up a little bit and look at other, other formations, other retracements. We'll go into extensions in a second, which is what I'm heavy on. But you can continue to play these as long as price action respects those levels. And that's all that matters. I'll show you a setup I have when we're done on the, on the sterling of a retracement taken from last month on a 30-minute chart that price action is continuing to respect, right? So we go back for a test of that 618. Looks like a topside breach. My next target is 161.85, right? That's the high that we put in. That's a, pretty, that's a pretty long distance. I don't know if I want to risk all that and try to go for, I don't know, 400, 500 pip move. Some of you might, well, might be looking for that. I'm a little bit more me medium term. So on these types of trades, we'll have to go ahead and tack on the other extensions, right? Which would be the 23.6 and the 78.6. On your platforms at home, all of these are, pre are preset in Fibonacci. When you draw your retracement, you can right click on it. You can choose which ones you want to show up. Uh, the default is 618, 50, and 38.2. But on these larger ranges, that's really when you want to implement all the retracements. OK? So on that breakout, where's the target? 158.68, right? I'm going to be conservative. I'll take the inside target, 158.60. Eight pips between friends, not a big deal, right? Bam. Voila. Right? Speaks for itself. I don't really need to do anything here. I can just play this presentation that you guys figured out. It's that simple. Again, the thing I really need to stress is that this is in combination with whatever it is that you're trading. Okay? Your directional momentum, your breaks, uh, your triggers for when you want to jump into a trade, your stop losses, that all needs to be figured out before this. All Fibonacci does is highlight key levels of where markets are likely to find support resistance. Specifically in retracements, it's on the pullback of a move. One thing you want to keep in mind, and if you're taking notes, something you might want to keep in mind. On a pullback, specifically with the 236 and the 382, it typically gives you an indication of how strong the trend is. Okay? If a market pulls back, finds, re finds resistance in this specific trade, if it finds resistance on this pullback here, starts to head lower, Right off the bat, I'm starting to really curb that bullish, that bullish attitude. That's a high propensity for a continuation to continue. Same thing with the 38.2. If it jumps and breaks the 23.6 as it did here and it holds at 38.2, it means that broader trend still might be weighted to the downside, but it's not as heavy, right? Because the market had enough energy to get back up to that 38.2. Typically, once we cross the 50 threshold, that's when you're starting to become a lot more, you have a lot more conviction on your, on your directional bias, and that's when you want to continue to target on these. Uh, top side levels. Um, also keeping in mind your, your range, what times that you're trading in, right? Is anyone here familiar with opening range strategies? Okay. So what that dictates, and I don't want to get too much into it and get too sidetracked, but guys, with Fibonacci, it tends to work really well. Markets have a high propensity to put in their highs and lows on the extremes, meaning early in the month or late in the month. So typically, Early in the month, we'll see within the first week of trade, we'll put in a low or a major high. And we'll usually, not always, nothing's 100%, right? But we usually end that month on the other extreme. I'll show you perfect examples in this in the Aussie, perfect examples of this in the Euro that was textbook, right? We can blame it on the fundamentals. We can blame it on what's going on in Europe. But the bottom line is, the way I see it, technicals are the fundamental story, right? They're, explain, they're, man, they're the manifestation of what's happening in the marketplace what the fundamentals are doing, right? So on that trade, 618 was actually the support level. We broke through it, and the rest is history. Now we're going to talk about extensions on that same example, OK? On that same example. This is the same chart, Sterling Aussie, daily chart. Extensions are where we're looking to project possible support or resistance in future price action. And this is a, a tool that you want to use in breakouts, in trending markets, in very clear directional markets that have a nice, nice, nice bias or a bullish trend behind it or a bearish trend, something that has some conviction on it. And it tells you where you're looking to target support or resistance, right? You're using it to identify your entry points, your exit points. As far as uh, your stops are concerned, typically my stop and my personal strategy will be the next subsequent level below or above, depending on your bias, obviously. The biggest difference is that we're using three reference points. Fibonacci takes a high to a low, right? An extension gives you projection of where you might find in the next higher low. So it's a three reference points. It works great in Elliott. Specifically, Elliott channels and Fibonacci levels are hand in hand, hand in hand. I'll show you an example of that too in a second. So 
Mike, how do I know which highs and lows to take? Well, quick rule of thumb. If the bias is bullish, you're looking for a low, high, low. So the deepest recent low, the most subsequent high, and the subsequent low that came after that. And that's what it looks like. The, the Sterling Aussie example that we're talking about. If the, bullish, if the bias is bearish, rather, you're looking for a high, low, high. So the deepest high that you have, or the highest have that price action recently made, the most subsequent low after that, and then the reversal of that, that next high that came in. And that's an example right here. And this is actually a perfect example of sort of an Elliott wave descending channel formation, your high, low, high, because we're in a bearish formation here, right? These tend to work very well with your classic technical formations, guys. Triangles, even head and shoulders, channel formations, wedge formations. The tags of trend line resistance and support are typically your go-to reference points. Does that make sense? So for example, in this channel right here, if you're kind of unsure what, which ones, which you shouldn't be, but just in case you were unsure of which, of which levels you want to take, tags of trend line resistance and support are typically going to be your go-to. Triangle formations, wet, uh, channel formations are like my speciality. That's a, you, get, you know the levels to take right off the bat. So using that same example with the Sterling uh, Aussie, you have your low, the most recent low that we put in there in August, the high that we put in in early September, and then that subsequent low. When you apply the extension, it gives you projections of where markets are likely to find price at, uh, resistance higher, right? So your initial target on this is what? 618 extension that we just talked about, boom. Market runs right into it. Now what's your next support level? It's 38.2, right? Next level lower. There's the pullback and there's support. Is there any basic questions on this fundamental stuff? Because this is the core before we start moving to live examples. Any questions? How do you draw it? I'll show you how to draw it. It's very easy. The tool, once you select it, you're just clicking on the points. Boom, 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 and it'll draw it for you. If on the retracement, you're taking the high, stretching it to low, boom, done. On the extensions. Um, Grav makes a good point. On MarketScope, there is an update soon coming to a, to a computer near you. Um, we'll have the retracements actually show the, the, the level that we're at right now. On the extensions, they don't currently on MarketScope. On the retracements, they do. Yes? Good question. Depends on the duration trade that you're looking at, right? So on my scalping strategy, I usually put my, my targets for limit on the inside. So same thing. It depends, if you're bearish, you're looking for moving to support, I'll put it five or 10 pips above support. Yeah, if you're talking about a daily chart, you might wanna give yourself a little bit even more of a cushion. Ooh, half the ATR is steep. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> I wouldn't go definitely that far. Listen, it definitely happens that sometimes, guys, sometimes markets won't respect these levels at all. It really depends on the fundamental backdrop. If there's something pushing the market, this could have topped out right mid-range and pulled down. And that's why we use stops, right? It's never going to work 100%. But typically, all the targets that you want to use when you're targeting Fibonacci levels are targets on the inside. Don't try to go for the full extension, squeeze out that extra four or five pips. It's not worth it, right? Give yourself some breathing stuff, a cushion. OK. So a quick tip on, ex on extensions that tends to work kind of visually to conceptualize what your reference points should be. The three reference points you're using should give you an arrow in the direction of your bias, right? So our bias is bullish here. We took a low, high, low. If you connect those, it's giving you an arrow pointed to the top side, right? Because sometimes you get a little confused on which, which highs or lows that you want to take. Quick, quick, uh, quick tip there. If you're biased to the downside, exact opposite. Your three reference points will give you an arrow in the direction of the downtrend. There's your three reference points, and there's the arrow to the downside. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's go through a basic trade setup here from scratch. Okay, this is actually um, a little bit over, older of a chart. This was early 2001, uh, early 2012, excuse me. This is gold heading into this year. That's when we hit that 1800 mark. By the way, 1693 gave way for those of you who are following gold. So it's sort of a key level I was looking at for support. But anyway, <laughs> so we're looking from scratch here. I use RSI, that works for me. If you're someone who uses stochastics, you're someone who goes to stochastics church every Sunday, that's your thing. That's fine. You know, whatever indication that you have to, to trigger the trade, that's what you should continue to use. But for me, some readily identifiable uh, divergence here, right? 
price actions making lower, lower uh, or RSI is making lower highs, price action is making higher highs. Um, there's a great presentation actually that Jamie did on RSI as well, which has been archived. So if you guys want to, you can go to fxcmexpo.com and see that. But I'm kind of confident, you know, I have an indication here, a signal telling me that this may be a near term top. So I'm looking lower, right? Bottom line. Does everyone get this basic part? Okay. Right, very good, important point. On an extreme basis like this, though, Rob, when we're looking at gold running up 600, 700 bucks, maybe not 700 bucks, but 400 bucks, on that type of trade, the divergence really can't be ignored. And also, this was the opening range for a new, for a new month, which we'll look at again in a minute. But if you look at uh, September trade, we put the low in the first week of trade, and we actually closed pretty darn close to the highs. So again, using it in combination with the strategies that you're using. The, the divergence in RSI here is just another indicator telling me that you want to look lower. It's not the main reason, right? What was your name again? Ted. As Ted was saying, we want to line up a couple of things to give us that conviction trade, right? So I'm looking lower. So on this type of trade, guys, what should I be looking to, to implement? Retracement, right? Boom. You take the most recent low, most recent high. And there's your retracement. Now, what happened down here? This is, again, part of my strategy. In RSI, you can use support and resistance just as you do in price action. And the trigger for me to take the trade was actually this break right here. Right? It's just like price action breaking support or resistance. Nothing magical about it, but what it is, it's a visual representation of a break in momentum. So couple that with, with the divergence. By the way, when divergence happens closer to 50, guys, that's the, that's the strongest signal. Yes? Yeah, so the break below 70 in RSI is typically your sell signal, right? It just so happens that that break of 70 was followed immediately by a break of this trend line support that dates all the way back to the May lows. So you get a couple of things I'm giving you now. You have RSI divergence up top. You have a trend line trigger break in RSI here. You're breaking below 70, so just based on basic RSI rules, you're already looking lower, right? And the bearish trend or the bearish trade begins. So what's your initial target? If you're a near-term trader, you're looking for that 23.6 retracement. You're looking for somewhere around 17.30. If you're a longer-term trader, maybe you're going to target that 16.93 level, right? But the broader trend remains weighted to the, to the top side here. So in this, type of, in this type of trend, I'd still rather book my profits at 23.6. If I get the break, I can always press it again. Make sense? Okay. So pull back, find support at target, 17.32. Boom. You're now waiting for a break of that level, right? If there was another RSI trigger that told me that bottomed out around here, Okay, and there was another trigger telling me that we were one of going long in the medium term, you're just targeting right back that eighteen hundred dollar figure. I do. There are some traders who take their support and resistance levels off the closing price. Uh, for me, I'm again more of a medium term, near term trader, so I want those extremes. I will take the highs and lows in the wigs. And traditional will typically be the wigs. But does it make sense how you have to implement this with your strategy, right? RS, Fibonacci is not giving you bias. It's not giving you directional indication of any type. It's just, it's all on the levels. You'll often hear me say, fibs don't lie. If they're applied correctly, the market will react at that level. Okay, so another example. This was Euro Pound. This is a little bit older an example, but it's a, a cherry-picked example that really shows you the strength of what you can do with Fibonacci if applied properly. Obviously, we're trading into this wedge, triangle formation, whatever you want to call it, right? Where would the reference points on this trade be? Do you want to take a high, low, high, or do you want to take a low, high, low? High, low, high. High, low, high, right? And what are those, what are those, retra what are those points of reference going to be? Boom, boom, boom. Now, the key thing to keep in mind is that nothing trumps basic support and resistance, OK? I don't care if RSI is at 150. It only goes to 100, by the way. Okay. Um, nothing trumps basic support and resistance. 
So what does that mean? When you have an, a key Fibonacci level that's actually converging with one of those trend line support and resistance, you have a lot more emphasis on that level. And typically, more often than not, the market will give a much more, re a much more prominent pronounced reaction, right? If it's gonna break through that level, typically that push is gonna go. If it's gonna rebound off that level, typically that rebound's gonna get a nice pop. But look for those convergences. Those are typically my best trades. How come you didn't use that bottom lower there? Good question. We did. Before, we, before any of this price action happens, right, you need to establish that this is a near-term low. Again, you do that by various methods, whether you're using oscillators, whether you're using pivots, something needs to establish this low. So if you took an extension from that low, high, low, that would have given you these targets up here, right? But now we have running into resistance again. There was RSI divergence on this as well. It was a pretty strong divergence. So now you're looking lower. Does that answer your question? Okay. So the way, again, I'm actually running, guys, if you, you will be here tomorrow, I'm doing a boot camp intensive two and a half hour training on my personal scalping strategy, which is heavily based on this stuff. Uh, but to answer your question uh, lightly, I have a daily chart, which is mapping out your key levels, your key fib retracements on a long term prospect, and then your 30 minute chart, which really dictates your day to day trading activities on an intraday level. So with this perfect example, <laughs> you're looking to target those downside targets, again, Bam, you run into the 50% retracement, but uh-oh, 50% retracement's right in line with trend line support dating back to this low, right? With this, something I really wanna keep in mind, guys, is on a daily chart, it really is crucial to stress the close. Why? This looks pretty convincing, right? Most of you would look at this and say that's a break. It's a convergence of levels, trend line support, you have your 50% retracement, which isn't a true fib, Mike, you just said that. But that looks pretty convincing. I can't tell you how many times, how many times you're, you're sitting on the trade and right before the market close, hello, New York rally pulls it right back above trendline support. So when using and trying to decipher whether these breaks are real, it's very important to, to use the closes, specifically on the dailies. It's critical. We're using the wicks to devise the actual the high, low, high but still on a closed basis to see if the Fibonacci level has been compromised, it's important to see the close. Okay, good point. Well, it just so happens that that break was the real deal and that got a full 100% extension right into that 86, uh, 86, 20 region. On the pullback of that, what happened? Found support right at the next Fib level to the top side. This has a 76.4, IU 78.6. Again, 78.6 being your true Fib, 76.4 is just der derivation of the 38.2 retracement multiplied by two, it's very simple. Um, but the 78.6 extension would actually have this uh, right a little bit lower at the highs, literally, for the, uh, for the candle closes. So again, cherry-picked example, but showing you the strength of when you have long-term fibs converging with your basic trend line support and resistance. It doesn't get more basic than that. Aspects of Fibonacci that's very important to be mindful of. We talked about some of this stuff already, but just to reiterate, doesn't give you your bias, doesn't give you momentum, doesn't give you any of that. It's all about the levels, okay? You know what levels you wanna target. It's gonna give you an indication of the strength of the trend, whether the retracement finds support at 23.6 or breaks right through, but it does not give you the bias. Developing your bias is a concept of a whole other, other presentation, right? Some of us will use Elliott. We're just looking for a three-wave correction. When I personally use Elliott, I'm not even looking for the five three. I'm just looking for the threes. I wanna know what the correction is, gives me the indication of the broader bias, and then you're, there you go. Now you're just looking for your levels. They should be used as reference points. Leave a cushion. So as you were mentioning before, you know, on a near-term chart, maybe not 10 pips, maybe five pips on the inside. Long-term chart, 10, 15 pips. Really depends on you know, the duration of the trade that you're looking for. But give yourself a cushion. You know how many angry emails I get from people saying, hey, Mike, I missed your target by six pips. I lost on that trade. Sorry. You know, keep it on the inside. I do, I do it myself, you should do the same thing. On the opposite, retrospect, keep your stops on the outside, right? Does that make sense what I'm saying inside and outside, guys? 
Doesn't, okay. Let's go back, real quick. On this trade, I'm looking to book a limit, right? I'm looking to take profit. So I'll keep my limit on the inside of this, right ahead of that. Again, it depends on the duration you're trading. For me, for my scalping strategy, it's usually five pips in. Uh, on a daily trade or a more directional swing trade, you might want to give it 10 pips just to be safe, right? There's nothing magical about Fibonacci. But you need to leave yourself that, that, that cushion. Again, these are daily charts. So on this short, my stop, what was your name again? Joe. Joe. On this short, Joe, my stop is above on the outside, right? I want to leave it just in case it goes for a tag of it. There's no point in getting stopped out. Right? Now, you still might get stopped out. Right? But I'd rather put the stops on the outside, limits on the inside, and cover yourself. Levels are more significant when they converge with long term trend line supports, overlay indicators, moving averages, pivots, any of these things when they converge with long term Fibonacci levels are golden. They're golden. Again, not 100%, but more often than not, those will produce a nice move in the markets. Finally, a break of these overlapping levels, like we said earlier, will typically be more substantial moves. If it's a rebound, it'll be a nice, a nice play typically. If it's a breakthrough, like we saw in that previous example, typically give you a nice run that you can grab some pips on. But look for those convergences. Those are the ones that I have more conviction on. Those are the ones that you really want to press your trade a little bit harder, and you have a lot more, a lot more conviction and comfort with that level. This is another textbook example of seeing Fibonacci work in real price action. Again, RSI divergence, albeit above 70, so it's not the strongest signal, but that's not the only thing turning this trade. This was a Euro dollar trade. This is when everything was really starting to get ugly in, uh, in early 2011 or mid 2011. We have the divergence. There's actually a monthly pivot that was right above 147, I think it was like 147.60. So I have already, I'm looking to trade lower, right? We cleared the moving averages that I look at. Again, I personally look at a 20, 50, and 100. On the dailies, usually looking at 50, 100, and 200. And RSI looked like it was going for a break right below that 50 mark, right? Which typically puts you in a little bit more bearish territory. So I'm bearish. Irrespective, there's no fibs on this. It has nothing to do with Fibonacci. I'm bearish at these levels. Attack on your trend line resistance. Typically, your tags of trend line resistance support are key. You apply your extension. What's another way I could have played this? From where? OK. You actually want to take it from this bottom to this top. So you have the right section, but you want to, it's in the direction that tr the trade is going in, right? So, so a lot of times people say, Mike, I had the same levels. I'm trying to replicate this chart. But the 23.6, the 38.2 are completely flipped over. It just means that you took the, you took the opposite reference points, right? This is going to be 100% retracement, meaning we retraced 100% of the move. So that's usually going to be by your origin. With the extension tool. I was saying a retracement tool is a way that you could have played it as well to try to play this pullback of this move right here. You're looking for the pullback. This extension is going from the tag of that trend line resistance. Boom, boom, boom. Really depends what the duration of the trade that you're working with, guys. If you're looking for a quick pullback on an extended move, the retracement is, 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 your, is your tool. You're good to go. I was looking and anticipating a break of this low, right? This was back when everyone was getting bearish on, on, the, on the euro, irrespective. I had, think euro had no business being up there. Again, that's more fundamental driven than it is technical. But I'm looking for, for projections on a longer term prospect. So I'm going to stick with an extension on this one, all right? Well, the market played out on this trade I, to the T. Initial target, 144.70. We cough it up 144.75 just to be safe. That booked. Took a little couple of days, but we finally broke below that. Next target was 38.2 retracement, 143.30. Book it at 143.35. Leave yourself that cushion. Great. Well, RSI now is deep in, deep in 30, below 30 into oversold territory, right? If we're below 30, what's, what does that mean? What's that? I heard both, both answers, and that's why I wanted to address it. Guys, when, when RSI breaks below 30 or breaks below 70, that's not when you want to try to press the opposite side. Okay? Markets can stay overbought for a day, a month, a year, a decade. There's nothing that says markets need to come back because they're overbought. 
it's the break back below that level that triggers the short, okay? Again, I'll show you examples of this as well, but this in, is in and of itself, the break below 30 isn't, isn't the signal. It's the break back above 30. That's when you wanna press the long, okay? And actually that did happen. We got a little quick bounce on a rebound right into the 23.6 retracement. Wow, look how that works. 144.70, I'll take it 144.65. Cough up five pips, no big deal. RSI coming back into that 50 level, right? That median break. Finds resistance at 50, guess what? Broader trend still remains the weighted to the downside. I'm gonna try to press this short here. What's my initial target? 43.30, 38.2 retracement, right? So there's a 50 level holding as resistance in RSI. Markets come off. You go right into that 38.2 retracement. I can only go four, four bars at a time, so we have to fast forward here a little bit. Um, went right through the 50, key 618, right at 141 was your key support on this trade. Now you want to be a little bit more cautious, right? Because what do we say? 618 is your, is your golden retracement. So if there's going to be a hold and there's going to be a retracement, I'm expecting it at this level. So right now I'm on the sidelines. I want to see what this thing's going to do. Well, it actually broke right back through the 50, found resistance at the 38.2 retracement, and then kept on going right through.